Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM 22 One Club story from Hemel Hempstead Town with me, Daniel. It's part 78 of the Tudor Times today, and those of you that have been keeping up with this season will know exactly why we're here. On the final day of the championship season, at the second attempt, we snuck sixth place. We're in by two points. We play a Forest side in a semi-final today that finished third, 16 points above us, 11 better on the goal difference front, and a side that started the final day of the regular season top of the championship. Is that going to have an effect on morale? Is that going to give us the opportunity to do what the side that finishes sixth so often does? Remember back to season three in the National League. We finished seventh in the league, the final playoff spot, and we went all the way. Has this side got it in them? It's a much younger one. There's a lot less continuity at this point, but there's an opportunity to produce a miracle. If you're looking forward to finding out how we get on as we play Nottingham Forest in a two-legged semi-final, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. We got a big finish to the season in the head coach. It was a bonkers episode yesterday on the pitch. You can find that one in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, where we'll be live this evening for a Europa Watch Along at 545 and also the football podcast, where our new championship predictions should be out a little bit later today. But a massive thank you for your support as always. Please do follow us over there if you haven't already. But today is all about making history. Kenilworth Road, Luton's ground. Hopefully it'll be hosting a playoff game in real life later this year. Here, we're hosting Nottingham Forest. So let's have a look at what team we can put out today. There is a little bit of unfortunate injury news. You can see it at the top there. Our dear Daniel Giorgi, who wasn't really in the first team towards the end of the year, has picked up a knock and will probably miss both legs of this one, I'm afraid. So let's go and see how we get on. Let me show you the two results we had against Forest in the season. The last one over the winter period was a 4-1 defeat. It was a little bit of a rotated side, so I don't think we can worry too much about that. But then earlier in the season, which was only five games before, we lost 3-2 to them with a backup team. So our first 11 largely hasn't played them yet this year. And they're probably not going to know what's hit them. They can't do much scouting off those two games. There's not going to be much that's relevant at the moment. So I'm hoping we might have the shock factor. We'll certainly have the better dynamics of the two clubs. Sneaking in on the final day with brilliant managerial support, club atmosphere and team cohesion. Even the tactical familiarity. Everything is up. To have that against a side that are deflated from not winning the league and not getting automatic promotion is a massive difference maker, I feel. I do want to show you very quickly a little bit on the transfer front. Nothing potentially going on here, apart from one youngster leaving. Bullock has rejected a loan deal for next season. Mateus has done the same. Nori has done the same. However, Scott Egan will be back. Reddin survived in the championship, so he wasn't available for transfer, but he has agreed to come on loan next year. And the other one that's managed to do so is Paul Thornhill. With no wage contribution, the backup left-back berth is solved. With a few people chasing Albi Armin, he might end up getting pushed to the first team. Let's go and get into the first leg of this game. It's going to be a massive one against Nottingham Forest. We've got a couple of players to close down. I'm not sure there'll be many familiar names in this team. We've got some big decisions to make on team selection. We've got a sold-out Kenilworth Road. Doesn't often happen here. Let's see what team we've picked. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. Okay, this is what we've gone for. We've got five days between the two legs, so we don't have to worry too much about fatigue and injuries and all of that. We've put a few of the reserve players into the 23s, giving them a game in case they're needed. I have put a subkeeper on the bench because I don't want to lose this tight on not having a keeper fit. But otherwise, I think we're as strong as we can be. There's always a bit of rotation around the midfield positions, but the rest of it virtually picks itself so we've got Zach G cock in goal Armin and Mateus the fullbacks with Taylor and Bajatic centre half Egan Flores Richardson and Doyle the midfield four and then Stutter and Jones back in scoring form Jones the man that got us in the playoffs with that hat trick on the final day now can he do the same again or will we need Josh O'Connor to be a super sub let's get into the first leg Nottingham Forest the favourites but there's every chance we could shock the odds here let's go and get into it see if we can get a first leg lead so just the one change for us from the final day of the season. Scott Egan, of course, was ineligible against his parent club. He's back in now. There's some good players in this Nottingham Forest team, to be fair. People who are young at the start of the game, Tyrese Dolan, Freddie Potts, Ethan Laird, Tom McIntyre, all come through and had good careers here. Ryan Yates still at the club on the bench. Louis Barry's there, the Villa youngster in real life. 
but let's see how we get on. I would expect this to be a very high scoring game. Both games have been against them so far. But Ricky J. Jones, please be a hero. He's just found scoring form again. Wouldn't mind another hat trick here. As with seven minutes on the clock, we've got Christian Flores drifting into a wide position. He loses it to McIntosh though. The last thing we want to do is concede first because generally we've not responded well to that this year. McIntosh is in. It's a great save from Zach Geacock. Probably one of the positions we'd look to upgrade next year, whether we go up or stay down. But looking at him, he's had a good season still. As Dolan puts it in towards Edgar, Egan heads away. Stutter gets there, can bring it clear. But Forrest have started the better. More possession and the first chance of the match. They're also winning a corner count as Dolan into Edgar. That's not good enough. You can't give away a free header six yards out. We haven't really laid a glove on them going forward either. So hopefully that will change soon. But nil-nil, we're still in the tie, and that's all that matters. Let's replace the latest scores, actually, with the Forest formation. So that will help us make judgments. They're playing a further forward, advanced 4-2-3-1. And it does seem to be giving us more problems, although, let's be honest, it's been an awful game of football. And at half-time, it's nil-nil. There's been one shot on target, and neither team has really looked like scoring a great deal. So let's tell the lads to do it for the fans. Maybe nerves on both sides, maybe deflation on their side and a lack of quality on ours. But if we can give Ricky that one chance, I trust him to take it today. Though it's a free kick for Nottingham Forest. Another set piece, which seems to be the only avenue of attack in this game. Pringle finds Shepherds up to McIntosh. Does look a good player from the bits we've seen. Into Radoni, 30 yards out, chipped up to McIntosh. Pringle left side of the box, back to Dolan again. Shepherds forced backwards, it's good pressing. But Forrest keeping the ball, working and waiting for that big opening. As Pringle, just saw the vanishing spray, literally vanish in half a second there. Bit weird the way it happened as Pringle crosses in. The only's up, it's a good header, Badgetic. It falls for Freddie Potts on the right. Ethan Laird delivers into Radoni. And there's the goal. We knew we were underdogs, but that's disappointing. Because it's a poor goal and it's been a nothing game. So we're going to demand more. We've got a corner kick and Flores takes the outswinger. Up to Albi Armin. Oh, off the outside of the post. What a chance that was. But it goes begging as Hayes clears long downfield towards Bajatic again. Brings it over halfway for Hemel Hempstead. The goal seems to have woken us up as Kamari Doyle shoots from distance. He's hit the woodwork too. And Hayes clears it long downfield. We're coming into this game now, but I think we're going to have to make changes to make something happen. Because with a quarter of the game to go, it doesn't look like it's happening for us. I'm going to take Kamari Doyle off for the old hero, Leon Bullock. I'm going to take off Kamoy Richardson and replace him with Leo Hubert. And I'm going to take off Scott Egan, who's on a yellow card, for Callon Hazeman. Three changes in midfield, hopefully freshens us up and gives us that little extra bite. Let's see if it does. Well, it's not had the desired effect as it's another Forest free kick, though. That one's poor and straight through to Gcock in goal. Can we create that chance? I just want to go into the second leg with a chance. Give us at least a result. As Gcock goes long, Jones up, McIntyre wins it, and Pringle gets away. We've created nothing for Ricky, which is a real shame, because we know he's got the goal-scoring instinct, and he's on the back of a hat-trick. As Edgar, big ball forward. If they score again, it's probably tie over, but the header from Radoni, straight at Gcock, and he is causing trouble, because I brought Hazeman on to combat him, and it's just not working. As Taylor plays out to Mateus, the right back, inside to Flores, down the line to Jones. Can we open them up here? Back to Mateus again, and Flores. And Hazeman finds Hubert. Over the top to Bullock, he's in one on one. Barely kicked a ball the second half of the season. But what a moment to turn up with a goal. He's a big game player, is Leon Bullock. Hubert with a brilliant through ball. He's had a quiet second half of the year, too. Had a quiet first season, in fact. But he set up what could be a crucial goal. Though Forrester straight back on the attack. Seems like the goal's woken them up this time. Pots back to Radoni. 35 yards out. We're trying to close him down but it's not working as Laird. Gets it to Radoni. To Webster. To Laird. To the back post. Barry's up. Brilliant save Zach Geacock. That is superb. It's away as far as Pringle and Potts. Still Forrest come forward. Pringle again. Doesn't do anything with it. Radoni has dropped back into midfield thankfully. And we've got a throw on the left with Armin. Imagine if we nick this. Bullock to Armin. Up towards Jones. Oh, he's beating the keeper in the air. 37 for the season. He's done nothing in this game. He's not got in behind once. 
but he scores a bullet header from three yards, rising at the back stick. Don't write Ricky off. I think we're going to nick this tight as Hazeman puts the ball in. Can we get a third? I mean, that would be flattering, wouldn't it? Flores into Hazeman. It's a poor ball. Conway intercepts. We need it back. It's a long ball through to Shepherds. He's onside. He's going to shoot. It's a great challenge. Flores, fair play to him. Made amends there. Gets to the byline. Hazeman away to Flores. Get it long. Just hoof it. He does. It's up towards Stutter. Loses out in the air. Barry brings it forward down the right. Forrest flying forward here with Pringle. Gets to the byline. Chance to cross. Bajatic heads away. He's had a good game so far. Laird from distance though. Good save, Gcock. Tip behind for a corner kick. I'm now starting to believe. Earlier on, a 1-0 defeat was fair. We would have coped with it as Pringle heads over the bar. But we've somehow found ourselves ahead. Bullock, big game player, makes a massive difference off the bench. And there's a few in starting contention for the second leg now. As Taylor goes long, Jones chasing. And this is the thing with Forrest trying to get an equaliser. Jones has found space in behind for the first time. Crosses for Stutter. What a finish that is. On the volley, Hayes got a hand to it. But it was hit with so much power, he just couldn't stop it. And the Hemel Hempstead Town Late Show is here again. That is absolutely superb. It's been a very even match in terms of the stats. But a ruthless edge has given us a 3-1 lead. And now going into the second leg, I'd almost be disappointed if we didn't make the final. What a comeback. What a ruthless display. And big shout out to Zach Geecock because defensively, he saved us from three or four conceded. Let's go and skip ahead to the second leg. Five days time. Hopefully everyone's fit and we can find our way to Wembley. We are back for the second leg at the city ground against Nottingham Forest. Daniel Giorgi is not yet fully fit and we got another injury this time to Louis Bennett Sheriff. Giorgi actually linked with a move away. He's got a release clause in his contract. And Hazeman, another one who they seem to be wanting to bid for. But now though, we've got to get focused on this second leg. We do know who will be playing if we reach the final. Birmingham won the first leg 2-0 against Sunderland, but a 5-2 defeat away from home means that Sunderland have made the playoff final and we've got to try and beat Forrest to get there. Let's see if we can hold on. It's a very similar pattern to the other game actually and at home the city ground will be bouncing if Forrest get the first goal so we've got to try and keep it tight and maybe hopefully just nick a goal on the break. If we get the first one I'd fancy us to get through. Let's have a look as nearly 40,000 are packed into the city ground. Absolutely insane. At who might be available for this and what do we do because there are some players that really deserve a go after their performances off the bench so Thornhill will be on the bench instead of Bennett Sheriff I feel like Hubert for Richardson is a must away from home Hubert a much better defensive option great in the tackle works hard he's a leader he's got great fitness too so I'd fancy him I think going forward I might have to throw Bullock in because he was that good Doyle is coming out today for Leon Bullock and the rest of the team, it will stay the same. I was tempted by Mateus, but now Sheriff's injured, so we haven't got the choice. What that means is our 11 sees two changes. Hubert and Bullock come in. Out go Kamari Doyle and Kamoy Richardson. And on the bench, Thornhill replaces the injured Bennett Sheriff. We've still gone for the keeper, just in case. Into the game we go, though. 3-1, the aggregate lead. It was a wonderful turnaround in an even game. But we've seen Forrest have got the quality. Well, again, for us, Jack Rodoni, definitely a man to watch out for. Four changes for them, though. The likes of Ryan Yates, club legend, comes back in as skipper. And a few others enter the team, including a different goalkeeper, too. So maybe they're going for something a little bit different tonight. It's a big one on Sunday evening. It's a very late finish to the season as well. This is the weekend the finals would normally be. So we're going to tell the lads to do their best. I'm going to go to the opposition instructions for Rodoni. I want to make sure that he's being marked because he was the man who kept getting free. Let's see who we can put up against him. He's in the number 10 role. So if we can get Scott Egan just to man mark him, that would do a job for us. I don't often do this sort of thing, but it's very important for us today. So he is going to man mark the attacking midfielder and Jack Rodoni hopefully will be kept a little bit quieter. Into the first half we go. Let's hope the changes work. Let's hope we can keep this crowd quiet, because if they score, it's going to be rocking here. 
We're just seven minutes on the clock and we're back with a forest throw in an advanced position. They've got a massive wide pitch which doesn't suit our diamond as Laird delivers. Egan heads clear though. Ricky J. Jones can break. Hopefully if there's one positive today, he'll get more space in behind. Taylor out to Mateus. He's got the men up there but he goes backwards again. I'm not sure about this. I'm nervous now. I didn't think I'd have to worry when we went 1-0 down. But now we're in it as Hubert finds Stutter. Bullock's been left free and behind but we're forced backwards. And Albi Armin picks it up on halfway to Stutter again. Up to Leon Bullock. Can he find the through ball? To Flores. Got space. Finds Ricky J. Jones. This could be the moment. It's a wonderful own goal for us. Jones is beaten by the sliding challenge from Dave Scott. But the sliding challenge beats the onrushing goalkeeper. And in bizarre circumstances and fortuitous ones, we have the lead after 10 minutes. It's 4-1 on aggregate. What a team we seem to be in the playoffs as Dolan puts in a free kick. Gray save Geecock. McIntyre from four yards gets it down with plenty of power. And it's wonderful goalkeeping again. What a season this is turning into as Ricky J. Jones up to Stutter. Back to Flores. Keep the ball. Keep them frustrated. And one more, I think you've done it. To score five goals in a tie and not get to Wembley would be ridiculous. As Stutter finds Armin to Bajatic. Into midfield he goes, finds Bullock, look at the space he's got, through to Ricky J. Jones. I think we're going to the championship playoff final. It's always the team that sneaks in in sixth. Leon Bullock, I don't know what it is, he's been poor for about a year and a half. He's come back in this loan capacity, he's sat on the bench patiently while Kamari Doyle's been the star of the show. And he's just turned up when it matters, as Hubert, got that bite in midfield, wins the challenge, captain in the side today. Laird gets it on the right though for Forrest. Into the back post, Radoni's headers over. And if that's the best chance they can create, then we're going to be celebrating come the end of this. It is 5-1 on aggregate. And considering that in the tie after an hour, we were 1-0 down at home. To have scored five goals since is ridiculous. And Bullock and Hubert deserve credit for it. As McIntosh goes back to Shepherds. The last thing we want is to concede one before half-time. It'll get the crowd back on board, but Egan nicks it to Jones. Great pressing, fine stutter. What a difference it's made, by the way, having Egan on Radoni. He's barely had a kick here. Bajatic finds Armin. Go on, one more, let's make it a party. McIntyre intercepts the ball through to Jones. It's out to Ethan Laird at right back, to Tyrese Dolan. They've still got the threat on this side. Laird again. Dolan's overlapping him. It's back to Yates, though. And he finds his centre half. We're forcing them backwards. We're playing really well. But here they've worked in. McIntosh to Donnelly. Chips the keeper. A lifeline for Nottingham Forest. 2 1 on the night. 5 2 on aggregate. We've seen stranger things in the other game. It could still be 5 2 on the night. But for now, we're in a fantastic position. Let's talk to the lads. We can't do anything but praise it. It was a stunning effort. They're all motivated. They're all inspired. And we've got fresh legs if we need them. But can we hold on and keep it quiet? The last thing we need is to have it tense towards the end. So let's just try and stifle this game. And so far we appear to be doing it. As Shepherds finds Yates. Taylor intercepts the through ball. Big clearance. But the strikers are a little deep now. Claridge finds Laird and Dolan. Down to the right hand side byline. Chance to cross this three, four, five now in the middle. Laird gets it back into him. Dolan to Donnelly. And it's 2-2. Two, two. Now we have pressure. Two goals away, Nottingham Forest. And I'm going to think about changes, but it's another highlight already. And you know my superstition. Ricky J. Jones is the last man back there. Radoni finds Webster. Chips it up towards Dolan. Armin heads away. Webster can get it wide. Oh, it's going to be crushing, isn't it? Laird to the byline. Webster in. Crosses towards McIntosh. Oh, they're one away. They are one away. I'm going to have to do it. Flores off. Four. I think I'm going to do Callon Hazeman. He's the most offensive minded. I'm going to take Stutter off for Josh O'Connor because he's a little bit more of an attacking threat in behind. And I'm going to leave the last sub 10 more. But Forrest, you'd argue, are now the favourites. They've got those early second half goals. They've got the fans back on side. And we're trying to encourage our lads, but it's not having the impact. Mateus is the most tired player on the pitch, but our right back got injured. We haven't got an option. And now we're trying to play a clinging on job on a massive pitch. As McIntosh beats Mateus like he's not there. In behind to Radoni. Mateus nicks it back. Finds Geecock. Very composed out to Taylor. 
He gives it to Egan, who clears downfield to Jones. Nick me a counter-attacking goal. But look to Hubert. O'Connor's played on by the fullback. Josh O'Connor, the super sub, hits the post. Oh, come on. Egan is having a poor game. I'm going to have to take him off, I think. Or do we do Albi Armin? Armin's coming off. Thornhill on, but this is now tense. 5-4 on aggregate. 3-2 to Forrest on the night. But we've got the goal lead overall. As Hubert does brilliantly to win it in midfield. Back to Thornhill. Up to O'Connor. They're going to have to leave spaces in behind. It falls for Bullock. Goes back to O'Connor again. There's four in the middle. He can't find the cross. Laird gets it away. Dolan to Webster. And now Radoni's in at the other end. We've got no legs left at the back. Radoni tries to chip Geacock though. It's a pathetic effort. And a stupid decision. But we're not going to complain. I'm in a catch-22 now. Do we stay natural and try and get that extra goal? Or do we just time waste? I don't know our defence is good enough to soak up the pressure. Egan finds Hazeman to Hubert. One goal will do it as Bullock finds O'Connor. Bullock again, please. O'Connor's through, got to score. O'Connor does score. Bullock sets him up again. The super sub is at it. 3-3 on the night. 6-4 on aggregate. Six minutes to go. Surely, surely that's job done. I'm putting the fullbacks on defend. They don't need to go anywhere. That'll be our first step towards time wasting. Jeez, this is tense, isn't it? I might even drop Hubert to a defensive duty now. Let's just try and get it done. Can we score a worldie of a free kick just to make it comfortable? Leon Bullock has had a super game, but that one's over the bar. Two minutes plus stoppage time to go. I think we're going to do it. There's four minutes added on. It's unlikely we'll concede to. But you can never be too sure. The time wasting is on. And we're going to slow the pace down. Not too much. But enough to get us through. And after sneaking in in sixth on the final day. I think little Hemel Hempstead Town. Are going to Wembley. Just one game away. From Premier League football within 10 seasons. Who on earth would have thought of that. As Ricky J Jones up to O'Connor. To Bullock to O'Connor. Keeping the ball well. It's the perfect way to finish. The frustration that will be going in. Waiting for the big challenges. It's up to Bullock. Can't win the header. It's away as far as Webster. Don't let him score now. Where on earth is the defence? Donnelly is saved again by Geacock. And he has been absolutely super in both of these legs. And he's the reason we've only conceded four. As it's Webster with a corner kick in towards Edgar. Another great save right on cue. And that is the moment. I know we've done it. Nottingham Forest 3, Hemel Hempstead 3 on the night. 6-4 to Hemel Hempstead Town on aggregate. And it will be 6th place Hemel Hempstead versus 4th place Sunderland for a place in the Premier League. What an achievement. We were battered on the night. But we've got the job done. And we know what the next episode's going to be. Well, just look at that. He might have let in 3 goals. But Geacock, 13 saves. He's made 267 saves this season. That's got to be right up at the top of the table. We're going to praise him for a brilliant display. And there it is. Next Sunday, the 2nd of June. Sunderland v Hemel Hempstead Town. We're one game away from Premier League football in our ninth season. It would probably be the quickest I've ever got there with a semi-pro club. And it's a ridiculous achievement when we've been selling big names throughout. I guess the benefit, we've had a few back on loan. And if we can go up, be straight on the buzzer to Harry Thornley, who rejected us at the start of the season for Dundee United. That will be the next episode. It will be a short one to finish the season, but my word, you're not getting a bigger game than that. And if we do it, I think there might be a party. It might be the most raucous I ever get. We know we'd be coming straight back down, but 100 million in the bank pays for a stadium, pays for training facilities. It will change this club's future. If you're looking forward to finding out if we can do it and you did enjoy that bonkers two-legged tie against Forest, please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments what on earth you think will happen in the final. Sunderland finished on 88 points with Forest, 16 points above us. We've already seen we can beat one of those sides. Let's see if we can do it again. Geacock in inspired form. We'll need that again too. If you want to stay up to date and find out how we get on, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back in two days' time with a big game. Massive episode in the head coach in the meantime. Above my head now, I'll put the drama from that one yesterday. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy that. And I'll see you next time for the Championship Playoff Final. Didn't think I'd be saying that at the start of the season. <laughs>